What up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to do the PID auto tuning on your 3D printer so you can get more stable nozzle temperatures. So let's get into it. So the main reason to do this PID auto tuning uh, for in my particular case was because I was getting massive temperature fluctuations, so much upwards and downwards of 10 degrees both ways which is really not good for a sort of consistent and successful print so uh, I'll put a little video somewhere <laughs> in the video so you can see what it was doing so let's go over to the computer and we'll get on to Pronterface which is a free piece of software for controlling and sort of manually sending commands to your 3d printer and I'll show you what you need to do Okay, we've got Pronterface loaded up, so we're just going to plug in the USB to the printer. So I'll just do that quick. See your your ding ding ding, which means it's connected or at least plugged into the computer. So if you come up into here, you can if this isn't if this is just blank, which it will be normally, you can hit port and it will refresh the list, and then select your um, serial, which will be your printer. If you've got multiple, then uh, best bet is to just unplug it from the printer, hit the port button so it refreshes, and then see which one that's been removed from the list, and then you know that one's the one you want to select. So, in the, but in this case, I've only got the one anyway, so just select that there. It'll automatically put in the uh, bold, 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 I don't even know how you pronounce that, bold rate, um, and then hit connect, and you should see a, a load of like text to let you know that things... I've uh, connected and everything like that. So, uh, for your PID tuning, oh, just as a demonstration, uh, you can hit stuff here and it will make sure you've uh, you've you've pressed home first. <laughs> just just gonna do that. Once you've already homed your uh, printer or whatever you can use this to control and things like um like that will center it and then you can go uh, whichever 10 uh, what 10 one <laughs> start again 1 10 or 100 in different directions so if i want to go like that way and i can make it crawl back and forth and then i can home it again so uh, that's how you know your usb and everything is working your newly soldered on USB port, I might add. If you uh, want to see how I did that, go and check out the other video. I'll stick it up in the uh, the doobly doo appear somewhere, wherever it is. Anyway, quick tip: if you want this window to be a bit easier to see, you can grab here. You'd expect it to be here, but it's actually here. <laughs> um, just make it a little bit bigger so you can see a little bit better. This is like a, a preview of what would be on your uh, build plate if you were printing it from here, for example. But outside the scope of this video. But anyway, the command that you want to type down here to do your PID auto tuning is M303 which is the PID auto tune um, then you need to set which extruder it is so E0 computers and everything count from zeros so E0 would be your first extruder E1 would be your second extruder if you've got more than one and then you want to put in a space and do S and then whatever temperature you want to do it at. Most of my printing is done at 200, so I'm going to do mine at 200. And then you need to put in C, which is the amount of times that it's going to run for. And I normally would do about 10, if my num lock was on. 10. And this means it will cycle through 10 times. That way it will run a few times and it will just make your actual PID tune a lot more accurate. So, once you've done this, all you've got to do is hit Enter. And it'll say PID auto tune start. And uh, if you look onto the uh, printer, I'll put it in the the, <laughs> the video somewhere on the screen. Um, you'll notice if you go into I'll actually go into it because it's in select at the moment. If you go into your menu and look at your preheat menu, you'll see that your temperature is rising. It there's no like it doesn't actually think it's like got a temperature, but it's rising because the actual um, software is doing it for you so the auto tune will then make the all temperatures go all the way up to 200 and then down up down up down it will cycle 10 times and it will give you a p i and d value which we'll see in a moment so i'll be back when that's done there we go there's our pid tuning finished 
Uh, it's run 10 different times and each time it's like adjusted these values ever so slightly and uh, hopefully that should give us a better and more stable um, temperature. So what you can do now is if you've got a printer that, support, su that supports it, you can actually save it to the EEPROM from here. But I have a feeling that my particular printer doesn't support that. But with this printer, it actually has the PID values you can actually enter on the screen. So we're going to go over to the screen and we're going to enter the PID values into the thing, um, save it, and then we'll try preheat and see how it goes. So I'll just do that now and you can have a look. Okay, if you've got the Balco, the original Balco, or the... How was that anything like? Shut up, you stupid... <laughs> Sorry about that. Bloody Google thought she was more entitled. Anyway, so if you're following along with me with the Balco or the Cocoon Create, you can go to Advanced, and then PID Settings. And then, unfortunately, we the lowest we can go with this particular printer is just whole numbers. So, we'll take that first value of the P value and of 24, and we'll just make it 24. Then the I value is 1.47, so it's still closer to 1, so we'll leave that as 1. And then we'll do a D value of 100.44, which is near enough 100. So once you've done that, just hit confirm. And that should save it to the EEPROM. So ne next time, you won't need to en enter these values again because that actually does save it to the like the memory or whatever on the printer. But for some reason, you just can't do it from this program. Or if you can, please let me know because I haven't found a way of doing it. So what we'll do now, we'll preheat it again and we'll see how the temperature, whether it stays a lot more stable or not. One thing to note with this process is that if you do it, say, at 200 degrees, then the tuning will be for 200 degrees. So if you're much above that, say 10 or 15 degrees above or below that, your values will be slightly off so i would recommend doing it at the printing temperature you most um likely going to print at so if you're going to be doing mainly abs then do it at 230 if you're going to be doing like low temperature uh, filaments like pla and stuff like that do it between 190 and 200 degrees as you can see that temperature fluctuations is pretty much been just deleted <laughs> um it really really does make a difference it's a really simple process and if you've got a usb port and this free software put it in one little command uh, and a few little things on your um, screen or whatever really makes a difference i was getting temperature fluctuations of up to 10 degrees either way which is really really bad for a consistent print but now looking really really good now if you want to get this even better you can run the PID tuning say another 10 times or whatever like that. Um, you get to a point where it's a bit diminishing returns that it'll, it'll help but not as much as that initial 10 times you run it. Um, but it's worth doing. Um, I'm probably going to do a few more uh, after the video and that kind of thing and just get it pretty much perfect. But uh, it's a pity that you can't put in point values because... I think that would make it absolutely perfect then, but uh, never mind, it's what we've got with this printer. Hopefully in the future I look at actually upgrading the firmware on the printer to uh, ADV, so I can't remember what it's called. It's really good firmware anyway, but um, hopefully look forward to that coming soon. Well there you have it, there's the PID auto-tuning finished and entered on onto the printer. It's uh, made a big difference. I, I'm get barely getting any fluctuations now at all now, so that's really good. I would definitely recommend doing this process for anyone with a 3D printer and you've got a USB port. Definitely worth it. But anyway, thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, comment and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And I shall see you next time. Ta-da!